Uh, folks, it's about five after ten. I'd like to get started. And the first thing I'd want to do is, is welcome you and thank you all for coming. I'm thrilled at the turnout. Um, it shows that um, you know the Section Three uh, uh, water problems that are over there are important to all of you as, as well as, as to us. Um, I think before, as we do with all public meetings, I'd like to start with the Pledge of Allegiance, and then I'll give you a little overview of what we're going to do today. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Again, I'd like to thank you for being here today. My name is Tom Olson. I'm the general manager of the Ocean Pines Association. Uh, we've got a panel of folks with us today to, uh, to uh, help field questions and, and to explain some of the situations that exist out there. So I thought I'd take a minute and, and introduce those folks. Uh, we've got County Commissioner Linda Busick. Good morning. Director of Development, Review, Permitting uh, for Worcester County, Ed Tudor and Chris McCabe, who's the Natural Resources Administrator for Worcester County. To my left, I have Steve Soleil. He's the uh, Ocean Pines Association's engineer. Uh, we've also got Carrie, Carrie Nelson, who's the uh, Director of Public Works. In the back, I have Ed Wells, who is also our, our uh, supervisor for drainage in Ocean Pines. The problem with Section 3 has been a long-standing one. I believe that it goes back to at least 1987. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about you know, some of the problems that have existed. I think it's actually um, it's existed for a long time and has gradually gotten, gotten worse with, uh, with build-out over the, over the years. Uh, the more homes that are developed, the more impervious surface that's created, the more... I'm going to try not to use this. <laughs> <clears throat> the more build out we have, the more impervious surface that we have, and that creates more runoff. More runoff creates more water. More water creates more problems for us. Um, that's probably an oversimplified uh, explanation to the problem, but it's it's um, um, it's what's happening so far. What we're going to do today, um, we have a brief PowerPoint presentation, and. Um, we have basically three goals for today's meeting. We want to summarize the research completed on Section 3 drainage issues. We want to tell you what we've found to be uh, sources of many of the problems. We want to present options that we have uh, developed to, uh, to do, uh, try and uh, uh, mitigate these, these problems. And then the third thing we want to do is receive input from our residents, you, um, uh, I know many of you are frustrated, and so are we, and uh, we hope that as time goes on we can get this, <laughs> these problems fixed. The presentation is going to be a tag team approach because I'm going to ask Steve, who's got a lot of technical experience, and, and, and he's our engineer that, that uh, knows the details of, of how this, uh, uh, the hydrology works in the area, and Kerry, who's living with it every day, as well as Eddie back here, um, because every time Section 3 uh, has water problems, these guys are the guys in the trenches trying to get uh, uh, some relief for it. Okay. I was going to try. I was going to try and avoid the microphone because it keeps on fading in and out. We can't hear back here. Okay. Um, let me just repeat what I just said a minute ago. Uh, we've got three objectives today. Our objectives are to explain to you what we've uh, summarize the research that we've had so far. Um, yeah. Talk about some of the solutions that we expect, and then again receive input from our members. Um, and hear some of your frustrations and tell you how the folks up here uh, are interested in trying to help you. Okay? There are two different uh, uh, problems that we plan on talking about today. One is the choke points at Beecham Road. Um, we'll explain to you a little bit about how the watershed that comes through. Uh, the Section 3 development goes into the next development, eventually out to the bay. 
And then there was a, a, a secondary problem, which is a low point at Pine Earth and Beacon Hill Road. And um, we'll talk a little bit about that, that problem as well. First thing we're going to do is summarize the research that we've completed on Section 3 drainage. And for that, I'd like to ask uh, Steve and Carrie to come up and tell you a little bit about some of the problems that you experience day to day, but uh, they uh, try to uh, uh, review uh, as part of this uh, analysis that we've done. <laughs> I'm glad to see such a crowd. See most of you when we're down there, when we're flooding, and like you say, everybody's frustrated and no more than we are. Um, I think we're the first group that's really taken this serious. I mean, I think everybody did in the past, but with the county and us this time, we've, I mean, you can all show pictures. You've all been there. We're down there with you. The first place we go, we, we've monitored the calls. We know where the calls come from. That's the ditch beside the county pumping station. And I know you've all seen it. You saw it a hundred times. The county's seen it a hundred times. When the water starts running clear from the parkway at Beacon Hill, it's got to get to that ditch at the pumping station. It goes through that ditch. And then the next slide. All right, that's Pinehurst Road. That's the road that's closed every time that it rains over three inches. Everybody that lives on that road knows that that road's a lot worse than the Beacon Hill Road. The road's on the parkway. Um, from here all the way down around the turn, we bring the barricades. It's like the barricades are on wheels. We know when it rains three inches, it's going to go. I can't make the water leave any quicker. I mean, I feel everybody's pain down there. That's why we're here. The people that live on this road, there's actually was a van in a ditch the, the last big storm that we had to help the guy get out. The county guys were down there too. And that's when we decide, you know, that's, you know there's got to be something done. We have all know that we know the answers. We spent a little time down there looking at it. Um, if you look at the next map, I don't know if, if it's on the PowerPoint. All right, that's where it eventually ends up. This is the pipe coming under Beecham Road. At one time, it was 24 inch. In 1994, it was changed to 48 inch. But it connects to a 24 inch pipe that goes all the way out through River Run. So everybody knows 48 and 24 doesn't work real good. The before and after pictures of Pinehurst, everybody knows that about six tide cycles, it looks like nothing's ever happened. And in my opinion, that's why over the years it's been let, you know, let go. If it stayed for weeks and weeks, I think people would be more mad. And some of it probably stays under some of your houses for longer. But what happens in the county and, and for the ocean ponds, the roads in about six tide cycles, it looks like it never rained down there. I mean, you've all seen it. It's hard to believe that it can... The drainage system works going that way. But this pipe right here, you can see it swirling. If you've ever been down there on that road, I've been down there in the middle of the night during the day. I mean, it's swirling. It's going as fast as it possibly can. It used to go back to some ponds back there that had weirs in it. A lot of residents, uh, I guess the folklore was that the River Rome would put the weirs in and back it up. And I think over the years, that's the way it happened. But about four or five years ago, if I'm wrong, Chris, the weirs and all that stuff was taken out. So that first pond you see out along Beecham Road, that water doesn't actually go there. It bypasses that pond and goes back to another series that goes straight to the bay. So with this research here, um, we've tried to go across that way. That's the quickest route. But that's not been the route that anybody could take because the people just don't want to do it. So that's where we'll get to the next series of what we think we can do to help you. Fighting the battle of trying to get it across River Run, we've lost so far. Now, I'm not saying that it can't be done, but that's not a good viable uh, solution for me because the negotiations have fell apart, let's say. Do them. <laughs> that, that's not me. <laughs> Our lawyers. Okay. Um, By the way, folks, we're going to take all the questions you have at the end of this, but we'd like to go in and explain the problem right. first. So if you just hold any comments right. or questions to the end, I'd appreciate that. To, to, together. If we, if, we, if we direct our frustrations and our knowledge in the correct situations, we can fix it. I'm telling you we can fix it. Steve's going to tell you we can fix it. All right? But getting mad at each other is not going to work. So Steve's going to tell you some things that we've done in the last year 
to know where this water travels. Okay? There you go. Okay. Um, I guess just to give you a little history, the um, the whole watershed, <coughs> almost all of Section Three, from Ocean Parkway, and well, more than just Section Three, but Ocean Parkway is the, the high point. Everything from Ocean Parkway north drains to either Bainbridge Park and goes out to Beecham Run at that point, Beecham Road at that point, or there, there are two other ditches that, that go out, but they all end up coming through this area, and that's a low point, and that's where the pipe that we just saw, a 24-inch pipe on River Run's property that runs through River Run uh, to this pond here, and then under their River Run Drive, and then out into this gut to the bed. Whole well, idea is we've got to get the water to the bay. When River Run was built, uh, they put in a 24 inch pipe from here to the ponds. At that time, the pipe on the beach road was 24 inches. So, yeah, I guess you know, they match that pipe size. We did some, after River Run was built, we started having some problems in Section 3. We did uh, some investigation back in the late 80s to find out probably what happened at that time. The initial run of this 24-inch pipe in River Run had, when they installed it and before they had backfilled everything, it flipped. So there was a hump in that, in that pipe. River Run went back in and corrected that. That improved the flow situation to a certain extent. In the meantime, since 1988 till now, um, somewhere, uh, it was a 93, uh, the 48 inch pipe was put in 93 and 94 to try and help the drainage, but we're still going into that 24 inch pipe. In addition, we had a lot of houses that have been built, section three, section two, everything that, <coughs> when River was built, there were still quite a number of vacant houses in section three. Oh, yeah. vacant Every time a house is built, more water goes out. So the problem has incrementally gotten worse over the years. More and more water, more and more problems. Both Ocean Pines and the county have had some discussions with the River Run, the owners of River Run, about upgrading that through there. As Carrie said, that's going nowhere. Uh, we had looked at, so we, we looked at several options to um, solve this problem. We improve this drain to get this out of Section 3, down Beecham Road, and out to the bay. Uh, without going through River Run, what we have is, a, as I said, there's a low spot here. As you all know, if you come down Beecham Road to the truck entrance, the St. Martin's there, there's a high point right in this area. Yeah, it's about right in here. So, yeah, right through here, you start rising as you're getting near the eastern end of River Run, and it, it, goes there and then as soon as you get over the rise it drops fairly decently down all the way to uh, the boat ramp area and Whitehorse Park. So what we finally can't come up with it after looking at other options is running, reversing the flow, still leaving the 48 inch pipe in and the water that goes through River Run, but as an outlet, putting a pipe in from approximately here. Um, that's where we have to go underground because the ditch would get too big, too unsafe. It'd be a very large ditch to go that deep, to go under that high point we've got. And taking that pipe from approximately here to just past St. Martin, which was here. Uh, Down to the back of Whitehorse Park. And then by a ditch to Whitehorse Park, some additional pipes under Beecham Road just before Whitehorse Park, and then into the back. That is the most viable solution that we can come up with. We analyzed it for the two-year storm, the 10-year storm, 25-year storm. Um, we have had statistically in the last couple of years a number of storms that are beyond the two-year storm. The two-year storm is approximately 3.6 inches of rain in a 24-hour period. So we've had some storms that are worse than that. So even, but with Piping in here that's designed for a two-year storm, 
two-year storm will, will flow out as it comes down. Uh, storms of greater intensity than that will take a little bit longer, but be a, a huge, as you know now, with probably 24 to 48 inches in 48 hours, it drains out now. But having a very large pipe through here with much more capacity than that 24 inch, most storms are going to dissipate as they come through, not it'll only be a few hours. And the levels in the ditches, the levels in your yard will dissipate. You don't see much in the way of flooding anywhere in the areas in the lower part of Pinehurst. So we have developed cost estimates for the construction of this, approximately $450,000 to put in the pipe for a two-year storm on Beecham Road from here to here. To go up to a 10-year storm, the size of the pipe gets much larger and the cost estimate goes up to about $1.4 million. A huge difference between a two and 10-year storm in terms of pipe sizes. But a two, pipe for a two-year storm will do, will take just care of most, with, with most storms without more properties being impacted like we are now. So that's where we are in terms of the the Beecham Road drainage. And it's a county road, so the county has got to do the improvements. The OBA doesn't, even within, you know, within the, the charter of OBA, Tom's not allowed to So we've got to have a cooperation with the county to put this solution in and get this water out of it. Um, so we'll go to the next slide. We'll go to the next slide. <coughs> I mean, when you get done, you can come up and look at this. These are the original drainage maps that were developed by the surveyors. Everything you see in the yellow, you really can't tell this. Everything you see in the yellow all the way up to the parkway comes through the pond all the way down and down to the pipe. All right, Beecham Road's up here. And there are other ditches that come out up here. And the purple and the green going up Beecham Road, they turn and come down that road too. They all go to the same 48 inch pipe. So everything you see on this map eventually gets to that pipe on Beecham Road. It's not a guess, it's not worth thinking. That's the way it works. You can watch it flow, you can watch it get to that pipe. So that's why as the pond starts filling, and it starts coming over the mailbox pads, you'll see it go through them two pipes that, that go on down and snake through. It eventually gets to that pipe. And then out on Beecham Road, that ditch eventually starts getting deeper and deeper, and it's coming back down from the swale. So then it goes down and it goes underneath. And the quickest way for that water to be would to go to the, to the boat ramp, except there's that, that, I don't know what they call that little hill right there on Beecham Road, but if you could get under that, at least that water there and there would be going the other way. Now it all comes back to that one single pipe. And as you watch Beecham Road, it just keeps getting higher. The last storm before the snowstorm, or the one after the snowstorm a week ago, down at the boat ramp, that road had come over top of that road again, and that pipe that went under to the, to the uh, campground was blocked for five or six hours. The county was down there trying to get it unblocked. It ended up having a chair and, I don't know, something else in it, but to get it cleared out, but that road, but that pipe floods also down there at the park. So you got that end flooding and the other end flooding, and there's that piece in the middle where there's no water. It's all trying to get back to that pipe. But if, after the meeting, if you want to come up and look at this map, you can see it a lot better up here. Say these are original drainage maps that's, that were made when they, when they built the section. They're not fancy, but the errors tell you where the water goes. And if you go watch it, that's where it goes. This is the second part of the problem. You, you remember that when we, uh, we started out, I told you the two basic problems were choke points at Beecham Road, and then there was a second low point at uh, uh, Beacon and, and Pinehurst. And Steve will talk a little bit about this. There has been an ongoing problem of flooding in this Pinehurst Beacon Hill intersection area. Um, Ocean Pines engaged us to take a look at at this area and to see what could be done with it. And as you can tell, this, the original platting had a drainage easement coming down through here, 
off of uh, Pinehurst, off of Beacon Hill to go out to this point. Right now, this is Dingy Court. From about here, the drainage, Dingy Court's at a high point. It's like on top of a ridge. Water in uh, Beacon Hill comes down this ditch to the corner and goes all the way around down here and then out this ditch to the lake at Bainbridge Park. It appears from the location of these easements, and this is, these easements are on the original plats of this subdivision, section three, that they intended at one point to take the water coming down here and from here and bring it out here. But it appears that they didn't, based on my knowledge of these drawings of the done by Prince William Engineering Company back in the late 60s, they didn't do detailed topography, topography before they did the design. When we got out in the field, I think when they looked at this easement, right in this area here is a ridge. Elevation at this point is approximately 15 feet above sea level. Right here it's about 20 feet. So it's, there's a five foot rise going across here. So drainage, putting in a simple ditch down here was going to work. These easements are only 10 feet wide, by the way. So only a small ditch would fit within a 10 foot easement. So consequently, they, they changed it around, took, took the drainage around the corner, and you folks along this road know this, road, this ditch on, on the road gets pretty deep before it makes a turn and goes back to the lake. So, I mean, we've taken a look at it, and um, it appears that a lot of the, the water in this area can be brought out by a ditch going this way. From this point and low point out here and down to down the, the roadside ditch and to the main ditch coming here rather than trying to put a ditch through here where the ditch would be 30 feet wide. Uh, in all honesty, it would be very deep, uh, seven, eight feet deep with, with steep sides on it. Uh, it. It wouldn't fit within the easement. It couldn't be built without changing the easement and onto these properties. Uh, even a pipe would be rather deep and rather expensive to go through here. Uh, I believe that Public Works has, has tried to start putting this outlet ditch in here, but it's been too wet so far to do anything. Uh, so the proposal this time is to bring an outlet ditch here with the proper grades and see how well we can make that alleviate the problem back in here. Um, and that's where we are right now in this, what I would call the upper Pinehurst area drainage problem, which is isolated. It is kind of a bowl right through here. This is higher than this, this is higher than this. Dingy Court is on the ridge. Ridge kind of just goes around it. The water from these lots is flowing this way. And this ditch right here is basically the along the So it's a matter of getting you know, the salt. It's a matter of getting the water out of that salt. Thank you, Steve. What we just looked at were some of the problems that, that um, exist over in Section 3, and now the real question is, what are we doing about them? Well, first thing we've done, we've done, uh, we've been ongoing now for, for um, uh, probably since June of last year. We had several joint meetings with the county. Um, because we understand one of the one of the challenges that we had is that um, my job as the general manager of Ocean Pines is to take the annual dues money that are collected for Ocean Pines and, and uh, fix things throughout the entire community. Part of this problem is, is a problem that's outside the borders of my community. It's out on Beecham Road, and I don't own that road, and I don't own the easements that are that are causing this this problem. So I need the help of the county. Um, we've had several joint meetings with the staff um, from uh, Ed Tudor's office and, and Chris McCabe, um, as well as, as others, uh, Director of Public Works, John Tustin, uh, to try and do something, okay? Part of the, uh, coming out of those meetings was, you know what, there's some engineering costs that have to be borne. Ocean Pines, if you participate in that, we will, we will take that, uh, that information and, and see if we can't develop a plan. And that's what happened. We retained Selene Associates to assess the alternatives and estimate the cost. We brought those back to the county. One of the thoughts at the time was that 
we could take liquid fuel tax funds that are collected from, uh, well, we all fill up our gas tanks and we all pay a, a liquid fuel tax and the funds are typically returned to the various communities for road improvement projects and things like that. Um, the state of Maryland um, diverted those funds this year because of some of their own uh, financial uh, problems that they've had and those funds never trickled down. We were hoping that those funds would have been available this summer to actually do some of the work we planned here. That didn't happen. But again, because we got our our, uh, our engineer involved, we've uh, surveyed the easements and shot topos of the area. We uh, on February 18th we prepared a letter to the commissioners and had a meeting very similar with this, like as to this with the county commissioners to make them aware of this problem. Okay, last Tuesday I attended the uh, county commissioners meeting where they are beginning their budget preparation process. I've specifically requested that they provide funding uh, to correct these problems down at Beach and Road. That process starts now. I think they adopt their budget in June or so. Yes. And um, uh, we're waiting to see what happens with that and we'll continue to uh, work with and talk to our county commissioners. Another important thing though, when I did meet with the county commissioners and when we did make this presentation to them, we wanted to emphasize that we are not just looking for a handout. We want to be partners in the solution, not just the requester. So what I said was, I understand that you've got funding challenges. They've been caused by a state, uh, state uh, cut off the funds that were normally available and they've been caused by the general economic conditions here throughout uh, Maryland and throughout the country for that matter. So, if it's possible for us to give, uh, provide our labor and our equipment to help rectify this, then we're interested in doing that and trying to reduce the cost and work as partners in sol solving this problem for all the taxpayers of uh, Section 2. And then finally we set up this meeting. We wanted you to know a, what the problem was, B, what we, we found through our study of it, and uh, what our, uh, ho hopefully what our solutions will be. <coughs> Steve had mentioned before, the degree of solution depends, on, uh, will affect the cost, okay? If we were to develop a solution that will take care of what we call the two-year storm event, and I think you said 3.6 inches? Yeah, right. A typical storm of 3.6 inches, which causes you flooding right now. That cost of that is about $450,000. If we were trying to develop a solution that was a 10-year storm event solution, that would cost about $1.4 million. Um, right now we're targeting the two-year storm event solution, and I think what happens is we will, uh, well, that's what our goal is, to try and, and get that to happen. Minimum of $450,000 needed. Liquid fuel tax funding is diverted by the state. We've requested the 2010 uh, funding presented to the county commissioners on May 2nd. Uh, the county pro budget process is beginning as we speak. Um, now, the, the county commissioners need help. They don't have a, 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 uh, a pot of gold to be pulling from. And I think one of the things that we can do to help them is to try and contact our state lawmakers to restore those funds, those liquid fuel tax funds that you and I pay when we fill up our gas tanks for the road maintenance, the infrastructure maintenance in the state of Maryland, which these roads are, are part of. Very important. Bottom line is this. We want to work with Worcester County to, to, to fix this problem. We also want to work with the, with the residents of Section 3 to do it as well. And that's our goal, and that's from the reason we're here today. So at this point, I'd like to open up the floor to some questions and comments. Right here. And would you put those links on? Go ahead. Uh, when you were describing the problems, I live at the uh, corner of Beacon Hill and Pinehurst on the, uh, uh, I guess, the south side mm -hmm. of that corner. And uh, my lot floods every time everybody else's does, but you didn't say anything about what's going on over there. You're um, on down at the bottom, yeah, right parkway, there. Parkway, down so there. Right on the parkway. Right. Right down from the parkway. And the same with the other side of Beacon Hill that's being cut off on that back. 
they can do it. Is, is that being affected, Steve, by the... Uh, it all comes down to, well, comes down down to the same place, so it's a choke point there in the ditch, so... Well, I think there's a, some choke, there's a choke point going across Pinehurst Road to that ditch, well, too. The pipe right here. One of them, oh. tell me before you, Those folks in the back can't hear, so if you just uh, try and speak a little louder. One of the problems is the original... Stand up. Original Ocean Pines construction, virtually all the pipes that cross the roads were 15 inches. No change, no matter how much flow was coming to them. So things like that, we need to look at individual pipes. I mean, it may take a 24 inch pipe there or another two 18s or something like that to, to get that water out of your side and across. That's just not, we haven't gone that far in terms of that would become a final design type thing as we develop some drawings to, to actually put these pipes in and, and solve these individual problems. All we've done now is yeah. kind of a general analysis to try and find out what the problems were. We had to, to shoot topo up in that area and get grades to see which way the water even flowed. So. Our logical thinking was that where it all eventually gets to that yeah. pipe, we start at that end and don't work with the excuse that we can't get rid of it. Get rid of it first, get that flow, and then we'll have to work our way back and look at the in individual area. They have to change the pipe come across the road. That's what we'll have to do. I know your house specifically. I know the pipe where it's at. I mean, you guys, you have as much water as anybody. But eventually it comes out of that yard, it gets pushed eventually, and then it goes away. Yours stays a little longer than others. But that pipe across the road is always full. And that ditch is great big going down that road, and there's hardly any water in it. So that's why it always makes you think. If you take that shot of that ditch versus the pond, it's like two tenths difference. Well, because on Ocean Parkway, where at, where there, there is we, no have, ditch we have one ditch, yeah. but look at all those pipes coming across Ocean Parkway. They go to that one place. They're coming over to that one ditch yep. between Beacon Hill For and sure. Beacon Hill. For sure. Same with this guy. This gentleman here is talking about where they live, the same thing. Our, our thinking was, and, and help me, Chris, we, we start at the outfall. You know, if we start up where, if we go to each individual lot, all we're going to do if you're above me. You're going to flood it more oh, down. No, I agree with yeah. what you're okay. saying. you got to go here to right. back. But we understand everybody. Okay. And that's why we, if we get started there, then we'll work our way back and find the pipes. Because like Steve said, it was 15 inch no matter what. They didn't even. This lady in the back had her hand up first. Uh, I have a property at 51 Fibers, a similar uh, uh, situation right there. My question is, I feel like there is no ongoing maintenance over a drainage. It's just, just a normal rain. So like that ditch that comes from Ocean Parkway comes uh, down back behind my property and the two sides of my property, it's full of water today, okay? And I'm wondering why, I've asked, why isn't, you know, do I clean that ditch out? I just feel like, you know, we have like even just half inch rain issues because of a lack of maintaining those ditches because you're looking at the overall problem. So my request is, can you just even, Problem, uh, you know, or even a small rain to make clean up these ditches. There's no reason for that water to be standing in that ditch. Um, I'd have to look at it, but there's a lot of ditches that are going to hold water, especially this time of year, all the time. You know, to, to say that every single ditch, every time it rains, is going to be completely dry, I would just be telling you a lie because it's not true. But I think there's some pipe there. I, I think the pipe is. is in you know, specific situations, we can look at it for sure. I, I made a note, so we'll to go. That's when you call. Is there is there a maintenance plan for this? It's my responsibility to clean it, but if they say it's okay to clean that ditch, yeah. then I think there's some pipe there. Yeah. 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 I think there's probably today three quarter water standing in there on one side of the road and not on the other. So there's no, it's, there's no flow. So I'm just asking for general maintenance. Yeah. What, what I'm doing is, as, as you're telling me about these, I'm making a notice to where that property is, so we'll go out and take a look at each of them individually. All right, so on a completely different subject other than water, well, I mean, it's water drainage, but what about people backfilling their properties? People what? People what? What? what about people backfilling their properties, she, adding right. levels of she, dirt and sand? She's to asking about residents, and it's a, it's an ongoing thing at Ocean Ponds. When you're the last guy that built your house, guess what? You're usually the tallest. Well, I was trying to explain to her before the meeting. Chris can help me tell her better. You're allowed to bring fill into your own property up to a certain amount with permit, but you're not allowed without a permit. But you're not allowed to force your drainage on anyone else. Help me, Chris. How is that monitored and how is that? It's, 
yeah. fined or penalized. Well, in, in the state of Maryland, Chris, will you stand up and stormwater yeah. management law is what affects that. In the state of Maryland, you're allowed to disturb 5,000 square feet or fill your property up to 100 cubic yards, which is about 10 dump truck loads of dirt. Um, there is, uh, if, if you're below that threshold and you're filling, you're not required to have a permit. With, you know, in the state of Maryland, Worcester County, we don't. We don't monitor that unless it's causing a flooding problem onto a neighbor. You're not allowed to force your water onto the neighbor's property without without authorization. But in a lot of cases, what has happened, as Carrie said, is that if you're the last person to build in the section, you're going to be the highest person. And in a lot of cases, people would build their houses, the drainage would run onto a vacant lot. So that's their own impervious surface that's created that drainage problem. So they're just getting the water back that they were running onto the other property. So it's a case by case basis and it's all complaint driven. And the inspectors that work with me work with Carrie maybe even daily to try and, and fix these problems. So So you're saying I can bring ten dump load ten dump truck loads into my property without a permit. Who's keeping track of those ten truck loads? It's it, so there's, I no could, there's no requirement for the county to, so how do you to know monitor that, that until it ten that. truck loads. Well it's, you don't you don't, you don't know. <laughs> don't know. So exactly. I'm okay. guessing there's people not following that rule? Probably. I would presume, Which I would are believe. all living behind us, because now would, we have water from property on three sides. I would believe that could happen. And they're running it today well, at 8 o'clock. And, you know, to, to look at the they macro a, problem as, as, what we, as what we've described this situation, it's a macro problem, which is the Beach and Road choke point. And if, you know, if there's some solution to that, um, a lot of these water problems are going to be, to, to go away. Calvin. Uh, I mean, I'm not down here that often, and every because it's my father's, my parents' house, and every time I'm down here, the two houses behind us have had a truckload of dirt in their driveway that they're putting on their lot. Every time I've taken pictures. So if in the past year that's happened three times, I'm thinking it's that I've seen. I'm thinking it's happened a lot more than that. I've had to replace my sump pump every two or three months at two and three hundred dollars a piece. But and I thousands of I can't get anybody where I live to do anything. Uh, first off, I want to thank you all for uh, putting this together. I, I really appreciate the attention that you're all giving us because uh, we've had uh, problems, uh, significant problems, for many, many years as uh, people uh, have. The thing that I wanted to, I have written a couple letters to, uh, I guess, uh, uh, the board, and I think, Tom, I, I, I wrote one to you, and I wanted to point out, uh, I live at the corner of Sandy Hook and Allendale, and there is a choke point that uh, is, uh, all the water comes down Sandy Hook, and, and comes, uh, even on both sides, comes across, comes up Allendale and over uh, towards my lot. And even when the ditch is flowing well out of the community, we still have water running across Sandy Hook Road. Yes. So that is uh, that is a separate issue. Uh, and I agree. Back, I agree with what you're doing here. Go back to that map here, Tom. It, it's definitely affected by that pipe here, too. If you see, I know right where your lot's at. Joe yeah. lives down there. Yeah. You live here. I live right see, here. This is this is Alan. You this live on this corner. I live right there. Yeah. Right. See, it's all affected. It comes with this pipe. So this is not here. And uh, what happens? All the water comes down here, comes down here, flows up Sandy Hook, and this is the pipe. Right. Even when this pipe is free, water is flowing across that. That's another one that wasn't put in to come to that pipe because of that reason. Well, it's maybe what it ought to do is come down this side of the Okay. But it all flows. Um, why don't we do that one afterwards? Because that was so, so specific, it doesn't help. Just gentlemen here. Um, oh, I had just one other thing. Uh, and it's a question is uh, many of us have seen the water disappear within the ditches within four or five hours after they're full. So the tide cycles have nothing to do with that. And I was just wondering what that might be. And that is the main ditch that comes from from Bainbridge Pond all the way out through Beach and Road. It just disappears. And so I don't know, it sounds like there's something downstream that is making that happen. 
uh, beyond Mitchell Road. Mr. Jones. So, the, example, I'm sorry, the examples you had earlier when we were talking about two-year storms and ten-year storms, and there was quite a cost disparity between the two. Isn't there, is there like a five-year storm or a six-year storm that would be affected? I'm sorry. That's a good question. Well, I'm going to ask you a question. Every storm is a, is a statistical number just based on historical precipitation data. So it's, it's, you come up with a number, so many inches of rainfall in 24 hours for every, for those are the ones that are the 2, 10, 25, 100 are the ones that are the most utilized for design purposes. Yeah, I mean, you, 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 you could come up with but yeah, I mean, you could come up with a number for a five-year storm, a six-year storm, a seven-year storm, etc. We we looked at these particular design storms because they are the norm for engineering design, for road design, and for subdivisions, drainage overall. You've just got to you've got to pick a few, or you'd be doing ca calculations forever. But but your but your point behind all of that is this. Any, we know that within a 24 hour period, six tide cycles, we can see some relief over there. Our objective in any one of these improvements is to move that water from Pinehurst to the bay more quickly. So if you do a two year improvement or a 10 year improvement, both of them are gonna move the water from the area more quickly. And that's really what the goal is. Um, I would imagine the pipe size would go something, you know what, standard yeah 24 to the increments between two and five aren't going to be that big um, gentlemen back yeah, there uh, I live in Pinehurst and it seems to me like every year or two they take the ditch out some I don't know why but That's it's only something out below the pipeline and I, I've got grass here and it, it makes the water flow through real nice now some reason they tear it all out and it, I don't understand why it's not solving any problem no. but the water sits there longer What's what's the lot? What, what's your lot? Fifty miners. Every every year, a couple of houses, like about eight or ten houses in there, they pick the ditch out. Take a look at that. One sixteen miners. They got the same problem on either side of the house. After the rains dried up, there's twelve inches of water in front of that house with frogs living in it. I've got letters that I sent to Ferguson for fifteen years. I've been trying to get some help. And I threatened to fill that ditch up so that the water would flow to the left and the right. <laughs> and I was told I'm not allowed to do that. Now the mower comes through and he won't cut the grass because he can't get down in the water and do that. Then they tell me it's a mess and I should clean it up. So let me, let me make sure I understand. You've got a dry ditch here and a dry ditch here. Two houses on either side. And you got 12 inches of water in 12 between. inches of water. I have okay. the same problem he's talking about. Okay. They come and they, they, we're fixing. They scoop it out. Now I got 14 inches of water and more than <laughs> Okay. All right. You stated that you attempted to negotiate with um, River Run <laughs> Isn't it true that in the past couple of years, every now and then, they'll close <coughs> off? the gateway for the water to flow through over there haven't they done that no and Kerry kind of mentioned that but I'm glad you brought it back up there's there's a there's a um, there was at one point a, a weir that was placed inside the ponds yes it's all been ripped out that was causing that, that to happen but as recently as this past year <laughs> that's what we were told could happen yeah right. that they had closed it off however they did that yeah. and isn't it true that they changed pipes over there just as recently as this past summer yes, yes. and they went to a smaller pipe the same size just not all the way through mm -hmm. uh, the, the in river run um previous to this um mr olson and mr nelson working for um opa the the concern was that in River Run, a, a weir is basically an outlet structure. They have a big pond, and then there's a huge concrete box there that has boards set in at certain elevations to allow more water to go out. Well, that used to be the old standard in Maryland. The new standard is they really don't have boards. They set the elevation at one elevation, designed to store volume of water based on these rainfall events you hear, the two-year, the 10-year, or the 100-year storm event. 
Well, what happened before, when River Run was originally built, they used older outfall structures that had these weirs, these boards, basically to control the amount of water that left the site. Um, in 2004, River Run was due for a stormwater management maintenance inspection that we in the county did. We did the inspection and found that a lot of their outfall structures had failed, so they had to replace them. Well, at that time, they replaced them with structures that didn't have weirs. So they couldn't control the level of the water. The water got to the point where it left the pond, it leaves the pond. Um, so, in the past, there was the ability to control the level of the water, but now they can't. The water leaves the site. Um, the second question was about the pipe replacement. They did replace the pipe. We, the county, forced them to replace a pipe that takes the drainage from Beecham Road and into their Muirfield Lake, the biggest pond they have on the but site. Why, why weren't those pipes replaced with larger pipes to accommodate the water coming from Ocean Pond? Because we didn't have a regulatory hold or legal um, avenue to force them to upgrade the facilities because it was designed and approved to take that drainage when it was originally approved. Now, I personally met with the developers at River Run to try to negotiate a deal so that while they had the trenches open, they could upgrade it. Um, we, we it would be more expensive to, money to do that than it would be to well, do the solution. We tried to get them to put a 48 inch in, and we were going to donate the labor to put it in. They wouldn't do it. Can they? They cannot legally stop the flow of water from Ocean Pond. They cannot, can they? No, they But they cannot. have done that in the past. Um, I wouldn't say they stopped it, no. I would just say that they controlled they the water. The, the water was still flowing through. The back up. But, the, but the old structures that were in that, that are now gone were designed to have all the weir boards put in. So they didn't do anything above what their legal requirement allowed them to do. Do you see this resolution with this pipe going down, this new pipe they're talking about is wanting to have installed going down Beecham Road? Is that going to alleviate the problem? Well, we, we have a preliminary design from Soleil & Associates, and our office um, at the county will review that to ensure it's in compliance with all the regulations you know, for stormwater management. We haven't reviewed it yet. Um, the concept appears that it will handle the two-year rainfall event, which is 3.6 inches of rain in 24 hours. And um, a lot of people are, you know, when you hear a, a two-year rainfall event or a 100-year rainfall event, a 100-year rainfall event doesn't mean that it's only going to happen once every 100 years. It's a 1% chance that you'll have that rainfall every single year. And um, I've worked for the county since 2003, and we keep pretty, um, along with Ocean Pines, we keep pretty detailed rainfall uh, records. And um, over the last four years or so, we've had some significant rainfall events um, in Worcester County that would exceed the two-year rainfall event. Um, I calculated from 2000 to 2007, we had had three 100-year rainfall events in that in that time frame. So December 12, 2008, was 6.4 inches in 24 hours. December 12, October 28th is another one. Marston. Okay. Uh, could you get back to the Lower Pinehurst? Did I get the? Uh, did I get the? Uh, the your your pen there? Yeah. I wanted to ask, uh, Mr. Um, right here, we'll agree. Um, this is. Um, well, we try no eye chat, so we can yeah, this is Pinehurst. Uh, this is uh, Beacon Hill and Pinehurst right here. Okay, and um, we know, uh, Mr. Soleil, you'll agree that the water all um, the water from this area over here drains over to here and then drains over here. Correct. Correct. Okay, and then the. Um, then all the all the water from here on this side all comes over and drains right, I believe, right over here. Yeah. And it's a pipe here. All so it all confluences. All this whole area right here all confluences here, and this is the north side of Pinehurst. So it all goes down, and all of this water goes down here and here, and all the water down here goes through across this pipe. And all the water comes down here, and then flips around and goes all the way down through here. Correct. Correct. Okay. My question to you is, is that you you stated that if you open up the, the and so would you agree that the, there's only so much water that can flow down to here, down to the main drainage channel because it's it's confined by the the uh, 16 inch culvert pipes which are under each person's lot, right? Yes. So. Sir, uh, please riddle me this: uh, What, uh, by putting in this drainage drainage easement here, 
how would this increase the flow down to here, down to the main drainage pipe? Well, <clears throat> let me say what we were because it's all—it's already you've already admitted there's a there's a we, finite we, amount. We were hired just to do the topo here to look at where this drains. We have not done a drainage analysis of this whole thing. I'm just giving you the points that I have seen from the topo that we were shot that we shot. Okay, so because you haven't we have, done. We, we had no basic information. Oh, so you haven't done a drainage analysis. Then. No, we just. So you really don't know if this is going to help at all. We've done the topo. You've done a topo, but you don't. You've not done a drainage. And analysis. I just noticed that. Don't you think a drainage analysis would be proper? I think. To, to, would you ask me? Let him answer the question before you go to the next okay. question. Would a drainage analysis be proper before you start determining what? What would be the what would be the answer to this? Well, I think the whole area needs to be looked at. Yes. Okay. Yeah, well, analysis. can I ask you theoretically? Well, we have not done that. Yet. Okay. Don't you think theoretically you've got you've got one only one area for the water to go down? Don't you think it would be? I mean, just theoretically, don't you think it would help if you had a uh, if you opened up and had two places to go down and it would it would help the water flow down to to the drainage? Not necessarily. I mean the. Uh, the single route that we have, if it's improved hydraulically, should be able to handle all the water. Right now, it's not hydraulically capable of doing that. Okay. But so you we don't necessarily need a second route if we improve this route to take all the water. All right, but you need to do the range analysis. Yes, we need okay. to. Okay. I, I think, done. okay, I would appreciate that. Uh, one other thing, um, okay, thank you very much. Uh, one other thing, too, is that. Um, that uh, you know, you said that you you want the four hundred fifty thousand dollars. Now I, I'll have to tell you this, and and because uh, this I'm concerned more the upper region of Pinehurst, but I I do feel the pain of the people down in the lower Pinehurst area along Beecham Road, and um, I believe that the funding. How much money do we have in reserve fund? The Ocean Pines have in reserve fund. Oh. Over two million dollars, but two million. I, I, I don't. I'm sorry. Well, I'm sorry. Wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. Hear me out. I don't. See do you want the answer to the question? Would you like the answer to the question first before you ask the next you, question? You, you said it was two million. No, I, I was wrong. I said if you just let me stop for a second, Pete. How much? It's it's less than that, but it's close. It's possible. Okay. I mean, it's scheduled to go down to about a million five. Okay, okay, million five. That I'm, million five, by the way, is dedicated already. But we're more asked for that million okay. five than the million five. Okay. So we have a matter of priorities of where we can spend money. It's a matter of priorities or the money we take in. I mean, I believe that this is a major problem. They have no, and you admitted it's gone back many, many years. I've read documents that go back, there were studies that were done back in 2005 that specifically warned Ocean Pines to start applying for money. There was, there was, there was a number of federal grants that were available and things like this that, um, that I haven't seen that have been done. And uh, this, to me, it's a matter of priorities that Ocean Pines needs to get their priorities because these people, I mean, if I was living on Beecham Road, I wouldn't want to stand for it anymore. Now, let me repeat something that I mentioned earlier. This problem is outside of the borders of Ocean Pines. I cannot legally, morally, or ethically take dues-paying members' money and sink it on a road or sink it on an easement that I don't own. That's why we need to work as partners with the county to solve that problem. Next question. Jim. Um, it's for these guys over here. Can you go back to that picture of Pinehurst again that you had? A okay. Uh -oh. We have the one main ditch going down the opposite side of the street from where I live. I live on the other side. 47 I live on. The drainage ditch basically stops at my house. It comes from his property on the corner, comes all the way down our side, basically stops filling up at my house. It won't run any further down the street. Is there any benefit to making that deeper to help move this water down? Is there any crossing down further? I guess that's my question. I mean, that's what we were talking about. There's going to be a lot of different things that happen after we get it opened on the road where we can get rid of it. I'm saying there's probably 30 or 40 or 50 things we could do up in this area. But anything we do now, you just create another place to hold water until you can get rid of it. I mean, we're up to listen to anything we can do to prove the, the flow okay. anywhere in this area. What you're doing is you got our whole side of the street dependent on a pipe going under in front of, what is it, 52? Yeah, I think it's 52. 54, somewhere like that. 
Is there no way of running it down our side of the street there, and there, getting rid of it somewhere else? There surely could be a way to do that for sure. Yeah, I mean, it would help yeah. this guy on the corner. I mean, he, he's got a, a, a full lot swimming pool every time it rains. He sure does. One thing we need to keep in mind, too, is that Ocean Pine is notoriously uh, poor drainage because of its makeup of non-tidal wetlands that two-thirds to three-quarters of Ocean Pines would never be allowed to be developed under today's current state. And, you know, it's full of hydric soils and it's full of high groundwater. So the deeper you dig these ditches, then you get an interception of groundwater. So you're really, you know, you get the groundwater that you're seeing, not the stormwater that runs off, but the groundwater. So, you know, I mean, it, uh, when, when you work in drainage, you start the outfall first. Right. And we're, the we're outfall all here appears to be the choke point of Beach and Road. Once that's resolved, then you work your way back upstream to resolve that drain. And quite frankly, I mean, no, no matter what is done, we, if, if the pipes put in for a hundred year storm, a two year storm, a thousand year storm, whatever, it still may never resolve the issue because you're, we could get storms that exceed that. So. Yeah, but let's face it, I don't see the county coming up with this money. I mean, they are in financial trouble right now. Um, they are. They yes, are. We are. They are. Eight million dollars deficit right now. What was the deficit? Over eight million. Is, is there a possibility to pump this? Yeah, can it be pumped anywhere? Reservoir or something where you collect it and pump it out? Push it out. Pumping them for stormwater is generally a very, very poor because typically. The problem is when you have the biggest storms and the greatest rainfall is when you have the most power outages and typically pumps fail. Um, it's always best to do it by gravity means through pipes and ditches. Oh, it's There's no question about it's not working. Yeah, but it's it's not working. Not working. Yeah, but why not? In, in, well, I understand. In, in New Orleans. Well, I saw what happened there. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a bad example. <laughs> that, well, Netherlands has, has, has a very good system that's never failed. Talking really, really large numbers well, of dollars. Uh, Mr. Too. McCabe, well, why can't the county? I want to know about the county on the fact that um, would you consider this a nuisance? What's happening at Beecher Road? Um, that, that the fact that the water can't drain properly. This is a creation of a nuisance. You know, as far as a, a nuisance condition, in what regard? Well, because it causes flooding because of the improper drainage. Well, I mean, if that was the case. We'd have a significant part of the county that would be a nuisance. I mean, we have other well, areas. I want to know. Well, that was a nuisance, yes or no? Don't get Sir, up. please let me answer the question. Okay. I mean, we have a number of areas that flood, not just from rainfall, but from tide events as well. I mean, given the fact that the whole idea was stormwater management, which is slightly different than drainage, keeping yeah. in mind that stormwater management yeah. standards weren't on the so that it percolates into the ground. From that standard, the rate at which this water recedes and basically is gone in that 24 to 36 hours would be consistent with the standards you would establish for stormwater management. So is it a nuisance to the folks who have to put up with it in the sense of, is a fly buzzing around my head in the summertime and a mosquito bite me on the ear a nuisance? Yes. Is it a nuisance by the law? No, sir. So you're saying all the these people have is not a nuisance? Sir, I just answered your question. Okay. All right, I, just, I, got, I wanted to get a straight answer out of you. Thank you. Now, uh, just uh, kind of like a rule of order, folks. Please wait until I acknowledge you before you stand up. A lot of people have their hands up, and I don't want people bouncing up out of the, the audience and, and kind of interrupting this thing. The gentleman back in the blue shirt just had it for a while. I've lived in Sandy Road for 27 years. I've been in several clubs. On several occasions, I have gone to that pipe myself with a regular garden hose and pulled sticks <coughs> and plastic bag and created sheet flow across the golf course. In the last flood event last fall, the Ocean Pines guys did a great job within the community, as Mr. Olson has said, they did everything they could do to block the streets. But no one from the county came and cleared out those sticks and bags that I cleared out with my hose. It would seem that if, before we spend $450,000, which we need to spend, don't get me wrong, that if the county would agree, their public works people would agree to make sure that, Kerry can't do it, it's county road, they would make sure that that pipe was clear, we wouldn't have the problem so often. 
I have done this in my 27 years. By the way, my job is I'm the Deputy Director of Public Works of the Town of Ocean City. I deal with training in Flat Island every day. Mm -hmm. My crews know our choke points. It would seem to me if we kept that pipe clear all the time, we would lessen the problem. It happens when we have ice. It happens in every fall when we have all the leaves and things flowing. So if we could work with the county to clear that, I would think that we we're not going to eliminate the problem, but we could lessen it. Last fall when I did this, I created sheet flow six inches deep across the golf course in about 10 seconds by pulling the bags out. The pipe was full. It couldn't take any more, but it flowed out of the pipe and went across that golf course. Um, that's my first point. My second point, Mr. Soule said that pumping was uh, not a good idea. I'm going to somewhat disagree with him. Next to my house is a county pumping station with a generator. I believe down in Dexter way there is another county pumping station with a generator. So if we lose electricity, you can have, if you put a 12-inch trash pump in there with a line, it's not cheaper than four hundred fifty thousand dollars. Again, it will not solve the entire problem. We are a flat community. It was a swamp before it was built. My parents bought a lot here in 1980. I've lived here since 1983. It, it was a swamp then. There was nothing here. We we're always going to have, when you have major rainfall events, you're going to have standing water. The county's position that their uh, stormwater management, they don't mind it's there. That's actually a very valid point. The water going into the ground gets a filtration and it doesn't pollute the bay. But our problem is when we've got water flows across those roads, it is doing property damage. So if we could have one, some proper maintenance, and two, possibly a pumping system, we may be able to alleviate some of it. We are not going to cure all of it, I'll tell you right now. We're a flat community, almost in sea level. I fight this every day. You know, she said to me, tell the people, you don't want water, you shouldn't live on an island. I said, you say? I did not say that. <laughs> I get in trouble every time I say that. You are going to have some water. But if you There's one other point I would like to make. I was a builder in Ocean Pines in my early life here. And builders, myself included, installed the drainage culverts under the driveway. Nobody knew where to put them. They're at all different elevations. So this young presentation about a total uh, drainage system study is accurate. Mr. Zulay, who was not hired to do that, cannot possibly know the answer to that. But we will have to, once you solve the outfall problem, go then back up the hill. So I think we're all going in the same direction. Correct. But I do think from some maintenance and possibly some pumps. We could alleviate it. And we're not going to get any money from the county or state. Believe me, I'm going through my budgets right now. We're not getting any money. Those fines are going to have to be all the houses. I wouldn't, I wouldn't count that out yet. <laughs> all right, so two quick questions. First of all, we all agree the, however you say that, right? Boat champ, whatever. Beach needs beach. to be done. So you can tell I don't live down here all the time. But in the meantime, that's not going to get done anytime soon, obviously, because nobody seems to have $450,000 to do it. In the meantime, how do I alleviate the ponds on either side of our house, between houses, not out by the road, and all the water underneath the house causing mold and that kind of thing? What do I do in the meantime? Do I bring in my 10 truckloads and piss everybody else off around me? I don't think so. Because that wouldn't solve the problem. Like, what do I do? Because I mean, I'm thinking we're talking at least a year for that drainage pipe to come. I didn't hear well, then give me a time frame and let me know how long I'm going to have to deal with the lake in the backyard. Hey, what am I going to do about your problem? I don't have a solution for your problem, I'll be honest with you. Right, yeah, I don't have a solution for it. Right. Um, I mean, they have a serious underhouse water okay. issue with a sump pump running constantly that's pumping the water out from under the house and then it's coming right in. Right. So it's not it's not unique to to to, um, to your dad or, or anybody. I mean, my pump my sump pump is running constantly as well. Um, I haven't had to replace it as often, so yours yeah. might be working harder than mine is. But but um, because the outlets are underwater. Yeah. But but so so I need an expert's opinion solution on how to deal with it. Yeah. Until 
After when we're done with the with the public meeting, I don't know if you have any suggestions for it, but but it's so specific to your lot. I don't think that that. Uh, it's the whole big yeah. Yeah. It's it's whatever it's underwater. I don't right know now. why my other neighbors are not here. Yeah. 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 police yeah. chief is one of them. We're all. Yeah. Yeah. And they're hauling. Well, there's a cross street from us. You'd never get an argument from me that we have a, that we don't have a drainage problem in in uh, section three. That's a guarantee. Gentlemen, back here. Uh, uh, folks, think about a resource that we really have, I think that something could be done. That's like main bridge. That really is a natural sump for much of the flow of waters into there. Now, when you have a bad day, and if you go down by the post boxes there, you can see a high flow rate coming from Lake Main Bridge going right down there and ending up, of course, at the choke point that we talked about. And let me ask you to consider going to Lake Main Ridge, if you look at it closely today, about two-thirds of its body taken up with dead water plant that has been there for quite some time. I would suggest that going in there, draining that on a temporary basis, cleaning it out, so when you get the total volume capability, build the berm up a little bit on that side that is near the exit. I would suggest for just discussion maybe two feet. Put in a well system that you can control the flow, the exit flow of Lake Main Bridge, and then place pumps, in fact, so that under whatever condition is proper by your staff to bury that, keep the load down when it's not a storm, allow it to build up. What I'm trying to say is, is that you've got a valve, if you put a few adjustments in there, that really could control what hits that path going over. Yeah. Uh, a little research that we did with Bainbridge Park, it's, it was deeded parkland and not a stormwater management pond. So in order to change that size of it, to do anything in it, the public has to be involved. I don't know all the details, but it, it was never deeded a stormwater pond. It would require, I think it would require a, a amendment to the covenants that, that run with the and land. It's a great idea. We've talked about it with Chris, uh, putting an outfall structure there where the two pipes go in, raise the height of the pond two or three feet. The only thing that worries us about that is the people downstream upstream your point is well taken it's not off the table we've definitely looked at it goal first is to address the outfall this and this Chris Chris's in. first idea yeah. I would suggest that, that is a practical solution and I would ask you to pursue it yep. I have a question obviously we're all here we all have the same problems I'm listening to all the problems we have the same problem. We live in the bowl here at Pinehurst and Beaconville. Now, I hear all these suggestions and all these ideas, but what I, my opinion, what I'm getting from this, and please correct me if I'm wrong, I see no solution to this in the near future. Oh, well. So why are we all here? I mean, there's no solution. There's no hydrology plan done. Well, number one, I think what in, Am I, wrong? I think what you heard either Carrie or, or Steve say before was when you got over there to the bowl, there was a at least a uh, a, a test solution that we we're going to try and and, um, and and create by reestablishing this this stitch, okay, which is going to divert some of that water that goes down and around into the bowl and try and get it down the uh, uh, the outfall uh, more quickly uh, would have happened already, but the weather's I mean, we've, up to the last week. I think we still had two feet of snow on the ground, so the, the ground's just too wet to work. And it's it's um, yeah. as soon as it dries out, we'll start we'll try that. I'll, I'll reiterate this, like you said, that drain pipe that goes across is always clogged. Yeah, I have that on my list, so we'll, we will go take a look at that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
they had to bring two big fire trucks down to finally get that open. To, to force it open. Okay. Let's go. With it. I'd like to address this to the county. Realistically, you're presenting your budget this coming week, is that correct? Mm -hmm. No, the budget process starts this it's week. It's already started. Yeah. Yes, we've just begun. So you're, you're aware of where the money's at, how much we've got, how much we need, and what we're not going to And have. when I said that we, are, we have an $8 million deficit, it's actually closer to $12 million. I was being conservative. It's over $8 million, closer to 12. So we know right now, obviously, our, the assessments are down. Our, all of our revenues are down. All of our expenses are up. Uh, we have uh, asked, we have continued with our hiring freeze. We are at rock bottom. Um, where is the money going to come from? Is, there is no doubt that I absolutely will advocate for this section for anything that we can do to help get you the funding or get the funding to do this project. I realize how terribly serious this is. Now, I live in River Run, and I, you're not here to listen to my problems, but beginning on September the 11th, my house personally has flooded four times. I know how bad the water situations are, and I certainly have empathy for all of you and what you're enduring, and I see that it's a serious problem. And the county commissioners recently had a, a dinner meeting with the Ocean Pines Board of Directors. This is one of the uh, projects that we hope to work on as we just took over the bridges. Uh, this is one of the things that we would like to uh, work in partnership with Ocean Pines on. The major problem is the funding and where we're going to get the money. And highway user funds. Caroline County just recently wrote a letter to the state that said since you've cut our user funds, as they have across the state, to where the user funds have been cut 90% and we only get 10% of what we used to get. They've said now that we have no money to work with, take back our roads. Don't give us any money, just take back our roads. So perhaps we all need to sit down and write our legislators and certainly get on the um, agenda of the Lower Eastern Shore um, legislators. Jim Mathias, Norm Conway, Lowell Solfus, and tell them, hey, you know, we want our uh, funding restored. So um, we will look for every available grant funding opportunity. And these, everywhere in government, these things are drying up. But rest assured, we will look for every opportunity to find funding for this. And we will put it, it will be foremost in the issues that I uh, look toward what funding we can use from our budget. But knowing the, the grave financial um, situation that we are in, what is the likelihood? It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's not, um, not something that I could, I mean, we can get close to the RIT. The, the, the latest in terms of the, the equipment and so forth to help yes. do this. I mean, that's going to defray a lot of And the costs. county has been looking at this since June. I know great many hours by, by Mr. Tudor and Mr. McKay have already gone into trying to, to work with Ocean Pines and coming up with a solution. And there certainly has got to be some way uh, to, to work in partnership. I think here's the bottom line on this. There are just no guarantees, but there's nobody that's ignoring this. And, and if there's a possibility that we can do this this year, I believe the county commissioners and the, and the uh, staff would be interested in doing that. Oh, no, I agree. These so, right avenues is just yeah. Just yeah. there. This gentleman here. Uh, I live at 145 Hertz, right next to 138 or over 30 yeah. Athens. And uh, of course, they come over to my house. But the thing I want to talk about is a Give you a few statements. Number one, Beecham Road on the uh, River Run golf side, there's no drainage ditch on there, there, only on the entire side. Number two, uh, in the years gone by, and we've been there a number of years, they used to bring up a, a front load, front end loader, and they would go down in that ditch, especially alongside the pumping station, pumping station C, and they would dig out that ditch and make it deeper. So it went over quite as much. 
Jones. And then they used to go on the 138th side and go back around uh, to Sandy Hook and clean that drainage ditch out. Uh, third thing I'd like to say is that you, I know you don't have a, the old fire engine any longer, but they used to have the old fire engine and they used to come up and they would uh, the pump them. And they would pump water through the, the two pipes at 138 and going over to the pumping wrong side of the pumping station. And they would clean those pipes out. And, and none of this stuff has happened. A lot of garbage is collected. I would say garbage, I mean, throw it. So it's collected in these drainage stitch. They're not very deep to start with. In front of the 138, I just measure this thing. It's uh, three and a half feet in the drainage ditch, and then when it floods, it's got to be about four and a half feet. And I've been wondering for years why a young kid doesn't get drowned in there. But it's very good thing, and I don't think they're going to get out. I've marked it down. We'll take a look at it. Uh, by the way, there, we do force force we, open the uh, the. The county has a new truck that we do we do use. It's a pumper truck. It has a it has a cutter head on it. It works ten times better than a fire truck. Mm -hmm. And in the last um, year or so, we've done at least 150 pipes throughout Ocean Ponds. So if the pipe is the issue, you need a pipe clean. If you call Public Works, we don't. We I mean to literally get to every single one. But if someone calls and you know there's one clogged up, we'll be glad to come clean it up. Not saying that we're not in the area, but. If you know it and we missed it, we'll take the you know the hit. Well, I haven't seen any, any up there for years. Yeah, I think we'll soon stop up. Okay. Does the 450 factor in the uh, labor and equipment that yes. you're yes. volunteering? Yeah, about 170 in labor. Yes, about 170 in labor. Pete. Yeah, I'm Pete Comstock. I'm member of the board and the treasurer of the association, and uh, this is my third Saturday in a row of Paul Pete. Thanks for coming down here this morning. Uh, I just want to follow up on what Linda Music said a moment ago. Uh, last Saturday morning at the library, 10 o'clock, Judy Boggs had a town meeting. And prior to that, uh, Saturday before that, we were right here with the 10-year plan task force meeting. And in both instances, uh, we raised the need uh, for the restoration of these funds that we've been deprived of, of the, both of the community here in Ocean Pines and the county from the state of Maryland. And uh, it's a very serious problem. And it is uh, needed to be restored not only for the kinds of things we're talking about here today, the drainage problem, but we also have a problem in that we have utilized that half million dollars. It's our money that we pay through the gasoline tax, uh, the liquid fuel tax. We in the pump pay that. And those monies have started in Ocean Pines been used for paving the, the surface of our roads. We postponed last year as part of the budget. I was not on the board last year, but last year the budget did not have the paving required for Ocean Parkway. We have had to, again, for two years in a row now, defer the maintenance of that road, the repaving of the Ocean Parkway. We can't do it probably for more, any more years. Two years in a row of non-paving because of being deprived of that half a million dollars is significant. Those funds are dedicated funds. They can also be used for the kinds of things we're talking about here today, I think. And that's been suggested by, by Linda and others. So, ladies and gentlemen, you have to raise your voices, not just here with Ocean Pines, but as Linda said, with your state legislators. This is an election year. This is a rallying cause. So please get behind it and support us in our efforts to get those monies restored so that not only we can pay for our roads, but also solve some drainage problems. Can I have, before I take any more questions, can I have just a show of hands how many people are, have their e email uh, addresses registered with the association? Less than half. Um, how many people have computers? Yeah. All right. Um, I'm why, don't saying, have, why don't we have pass it around or something to get people to... I, actually, and, that's, and the reason for the question, folks, is because I think that Pete makes an excellent point and that one of the things that we need to do as a, as a body of, of uh, uh, taxpaying residents is to express our concerns on a state level as well as a, uh, a local level. And... Um, what I'm going to ask my public relations director to do is to um, publish the, the mailing addresses and the, and the, uh, the information for our, our elected officials so that you can, so we can distribute it to you and that you can uh, um, actually help us to get the kind of support that I think we need. I'm going to start this pad over here, let it go over this side and then on to the next. Well, address, email, email address. Uh, 
name, uh, name, uh, property address, and email address. Can I, I was going to, this gentleman here had his hand up behind you, and I'll, I'll come around. On, on the map that you have on the screen, you suggested putting an extra bridge. Yeah, go back up to the one. Yeah, the fine hurts. The, the oh, yeah. There you go. You suggested as a temporary solution putting an extra ditch across there to funnel more water into the ditch down Pinehurst. I'm not sure that the culverts under the driveways down along Pinehurst are going to be big enough to carry that extra flow of water that you're directing down that ditch. Good point. Good point. It's a good point, but putting putting that ditch in won't cause any more of a problem, I don't think. Right? We're in no hydrology it's, study, so they don't know it's going to work anyway. Marston, again, if, if you just, I'd be happy to acknowledge it and recognize it, and, and, and you can ask a question at the time. Um, this lady right here. Um, this may seem a little odd, but I walk a lot around the pines, and if I'm astonished at the lack of concern of cleanliness with property owners. The newspapers and everything that are laying around, are going in the ditch and I live on a long ditch there are four houses on my ditch and three are dark and I go around picking up things I think that may be one of the problems the house across the road from me I'm, I'm at 67 Ocean Parkway and the house across the road from me is a renter and their garbage lays there for I don't know how long and some of it goes in the ditch, so I pick it up. I cross the road and pick it up. Now, am I helping the flow of the water? You sure are. If it's out of the ditch, it's not blocking the ditch, Why right? Why isn't Ocean Pines picking up all the trash? My God. Where our mailbox I, is at the pumping station, number three, I think it is. I think that's the dirtiest pumping station. When I go up there, I like to trip and turn my ankle. But all those pine needles and everything that are there go down to the parkway, go in the ditch, and go by my house. So they're clogging it up. Yeah. A couple comments. Number so one. So it needs cleanliness. Yeah. Ocean Pine spends a good deal of time. God, if, if I had to count the number of man hours we've, we've invested in, in. If you would see the trash that we would pick up in this town, well, we would make it sick. Yeah. yeah. I don't understand the people not caring about the trash that's laying around in their yards. Are they all renters and not property owners? I think it's or a mix. There's a mix. Owners lacking yeah. the d dignity of cleanliness. Okay. So, Doug, I'll get you in a minute. Someone else. Yeah, Can I just like piggyback on, on her comment? Are there maybe a suggestion? Put something in the newsletter. Every time the newsletter comes out for Ocean Pines about keeping your drainage clean, it's your responsibility, you know, to help um, prevent flooding uh, or, or you know, help yeah. control it some. Uh, I think people just need to be reminded. It's an excellent point, and I actually think you did that the last we, last we've newsletter. Done a couple times, yeah. not 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 later. Yeah. I think it needs to go. That needs to be a constant a, reminder. A, a constant yeah. every. How often do you do it? it I've, I've got community do. volunteers that help that come to the office and they keep areas clean. Yeah. But we have two guys that are, are on the road every day and that's yeah. all they do. I mean, I have gone bag after bag. Hill and fished out newspapers just in the last yeah. couple of weeks, clothing, you know, to prevent them from going it's, in. It's a good point. Thank you. Doug. My name is Doug Lower. I have a house in Three Allendale, but I have 20 houses in the Pines. I'm a professional engineer and land surveyor. No, Mr. Sidley, very well. Uh, when I look at this, but they, could you turn the, when I look at this, um, I did work on this property here for an attorney. And the, we all know the water flows down this way to here and out this ditch. While I was out, I went out last week after the last uh, rain, rain event, and this ditch was empty. But on every side of every pipe, all the way up here, the water raised up, which means that either the pipe is misset and flowing the wrong direction, or there's a blockage in the pipe. Now I think, as far as the county's concerned, we're 10 years before we're gonna get any help there. And I think we can do a lot, particularly in this area, of our own maintenance before we, and get the pipe set in the right direction because the contractor set the pipes, they might not be set right, might not be high enough, might need to be larger. I would think we should concentrate in this area getting these pipes the right size, number one, and the right flow, number two. And then I think if we have water in this ditch, 
there wouldn't be water back up here. What, you're, what the choke point, as I see it, is each one of these pipes. And if that doesn't take care of it, what another gentleman said down here was to put, put uh, lower, make drainage on this side of the road and then have it cross over here. Um, that would require each of these pipes that are along here to be reset as we go. But that's some ocean pines can do. And I, 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 would, I would far prefer to see this area here drained, put new pipes all along here, come across the road here with a, with a pipe into this ditch, because this ditch was empty, and this, and this area was, had water on it along with here and here. And I, I would think we should concentrate our efforts on getting the water to flow to an empty ditch before we worry about uh, uh, a two-year storm. And as far as the, uh, I think the point Mr. McCabe was trying to make earlier was, the reason the water goes down, in my opinion, has to do with the pervious soils Same. in the bottom of the ditches right, and not the outflow. Correct. So what you're doing is you're dissipating the water into groundwater. But I definitely concentrate on both sides of this row to that ditch before I'd uh, invest a lot of money elsewhere. Yeah, yeah like this gentleman said, I was a surveyor too. And you can go there, you got one pipe here, one pipe here, one pipe down here. And the water's never going to flow until somebody has a survey through there and can get it graded where it'll drain to two or three different points. That's what he's trying to tell you. Mm -hmm. Tom, you've been where we are, 59 Pinehurst. You can go from our house, three houses down, and it's all flooded, and then you know, where the two new houses are that they built, there's nothing. So it doesn't even get down to where the one pipe goes across the street. And, and each pipe, I mean, you watch them build it, and maybe that is a partial solution. I mean, oh, this gentleman didn't get a chance yet. Your new solution, how does the tide affect that, and is there a way to get around the tide? Um... What's that? How does the tide, if, if we did this solution, um, how does it affect the tide? If the tides are up, the water's going to be... Uh, it's a big ditch. Well, <laughs> well, if the river runs, the tide doesn't really come up. The tide comes up to about here. And this is tidal to just about the entrance to the boat, to the boat ramp. It's quite a drop from the low point of the pipe here down to there. I'm not saying, you know, with, with an extremely high tide, three or four feet above normal high tide, which we have had in the last year, in the last six months, actually. Uh, it's going to it, it's going to back up in the ditches along Beach Road, but it's not going to go beyond the high point. And this is still going to drain from here down. But tidal cycles, I mean, we are a uh, wetlands community and tides do affect certain areas of it. And it all depends on the, uh, the height of the tide above, uh, of nor above normal conditions as to how much effect it would have on hydraulics. You know, to this gentleman's question though, how long does a high tide cycle uh, stay before you start seeing that? that um, it'd be a six hour period. Um, Nor Ida went through six high tide cycles, and at my house it was about three and a half feet above normal high tides. So that's six times 36 hours. We're done. We're done. No more questions. About answering, answering Doug's stuff, the, another thing about the driveway pipes that everybody, we've looked at him, he's exactly right. The problem that you run into when you get to these driveways, some people's got stamped concrete, some people's got blacktop. So when we go to take that stuff up, if you look in the declarations, you've got to put the blacktop and the concrete back. Not saying that we don't, and we do it. We've cut them and we move them. But getting back to what Doug says, if you've got a 15-inch pipe and there's, and there's seven inches of water, there's still eight inches that can go out that pipe. So there are water laying in ditches for sure. Whether they were set the right height or not, you know, he's probably right because what happens is the contractor is supposed to call Ocean Pines to help set it, but if they're too busy, too quick, and they get them in. Not if it's dry on either side of the pipes. 
You can walk along there and there's water in front of a house and three houses down, it's bone dry. Yeah, and pipes too high. So that pipe is too low. And Ferguson knew those pipes were too low. He said there's nothing we can do about it because it costs too much money to raise all the pipes. I wouldn't say that. I never said that. No, I didn't say it. I have a letter here from Ferguson telling me that. Um, sir, all I can tell you is we're here today because we want to address it. I haven't written you no letters. I'm not Dave Ferguson. I'm Kerry Nelson. I'm, we've set this meeting up. I hear you. Terribly, We're going to look at them, and I hope I can fix your pipe. The people knew when they put down the cement and the macadam that it was their responsibility, and they were told that if anything has to go through there, they have to take care of it. I'm, I'm but with you me. people have to take care of those pipes I because got you. they're put in wrong. I'm listening. I was told by your office that anybody that put at asphalt, macadam, any kind of stuff out in the right of way, and it that had to be worked on, that it would it would it was the responsibility of the homeowner to fix it because they they should not have that's correct have, have gone out there. That's correct. So if if the pipes are the wrong height and it's causing other people drainage that, problems, right. then it's that the is responsibility of Ocean Pines to put those pipes at the right height, Doug, and the owners have got to put I, the papers back. I understand back. that that is it's as of my sense. office. That is as of my office since March 2006. I can't answer for a pipe that was put in before 2006. I can come fix it, but I can't tell you why they did it. If they wanted to answer, you should have been asking to get it fixed. Uh, you have not asked me, sir. <laughs> okay. Any more questions? They did. So basically, we're ending with this that you're just saying that um, uh, this is the problem, but we, we do not have an action plan. In a time that we're going to know this is this is this is, this is uh, taken care of. I would say That's that. What I understand. I think maybe you've missed some things. I okay. don't think so. Please refresh my take out my dream. Well, number one, we prepared a letter to the county commissioners requesting funding. That was done on February 18th. Thank you. You can talk after, you can stay here and talk as long as you like after, uh, after we're done. February 18th, we've asked for the county commissioners to provide funding. March 2nd, I went back to them and asked them again. Today we, we're, we're here. I'm going to ask you to get in touch with your county, your county commissioners. I'm going to ask you to get in touch with your state representatives. We need your help to get some funding so that this can happen. Okay? Um, you know, we're ready, willing, and able to do as much as we can when, uh, when we can, and, and that's why we wanted you here today so we could share that with you. What are you guys going to do for the community? I mean, we can't wait for the county. I mean, what are we going to do about what's yeah, going on? That's that what everybody's here for. That's what you guys are going to do. Yeah, with the money we got. Look. Right. <laughs> All right, I'll repeat what I said just a little while ago. You told us what you're going to do with the county. We're talking about Listen to what I said. <clears throat> Listen to what I said. Now, I want to make this very, very clear. Ocean Pines Association collects annual dues. Okay? Those funds are used within the borders of Ocean Pines to maintain Ocean Pines properties, amenities, properties, roads, public, uh, public safety, all those good things. This building as examples. That's a county road out there that's creating a choke point for me. Okay? I am not legally, morally, or ethically able to take your dues money and take the dues money of 8,400 8, people in here and put it on a piece of property that I don't own. It would be as, it would be as ir irresponsible as going over to Berlin and fixing somebody's property. You don't want me doing that stuff. You have to, I'm concentrating on, on what we have here. But I am very much a willing and able partner with the county to do everything we can right here um, to fix that problem. Unfortunately, it appears we're blaming the whole thing on Beach and Road in the county. Yeah. I think there's an awful lot of stuff we can do internally in Ocean Pines to those pipes, to the drainage ditches, to the pipes that are closed up, to the, you know, until I brought it up here a little while ago, we didn't even hear about these pipes out on the road that were going the wrong way. I think we got to concentrate our efforts what, what we can do within our own environment and put the money of Ocean Pines to work in Ocean Pines because I don't think we're going to see this, this at least we'll improve some areas of the Pines we might not be able to solve the problem but we can at least improve at least the Pine area I, so I agree 100% and I think it's, it's um, our association's responsibility to put together, together a letter of action that says the things that you're going to do for us 
the people that are paying our association dues, clean out ditches, all the things that we do have control over, and put, put, put a, a plan of action together to let us know at least the things that you can do for us right now. I'm going one step further. We're not doing a plan of action. I got a list of things for them to go out and look at. Well then, yeah. well, pass it on to us so that yeah. you know what you're doing because we need to know that. Okay. Because the next storm is going to come and we're going to say we have no answers. Well, if you tell us what you're doing, mm -hmm. tell us step by step by step what you're doing, it's going to help our psyche a whole lot. Mm -hmm. uh, Jenny had her hand up first, so let me go. Two things I got out of this, other than all the other things that you mentioned, Tom, and I intended to uh, One is a lot of people went around cleaning out the kids on their own. Now, I have three lots on the front I do not mind it just regularly. In fact, that's all my list for this weekend. So my suggestion is a lot of this problem, the ditches themselves being cleaned out by the owners or residents can help. Definitely. The papers to the business of addressing our noble political leaders. I think if we can get a letter written by Ocean Times itself with all the email addresses of people who believe we get our, we should get our money back would make a bigger impression on them than individual letters written. Yeah. Still not with the team yet, yeah. the numbers matter. Pete. Let me just address the question of uh, keeping you informed. We would very much like to do that. The principal mechanism to do that is through our website. And um, so I would ask you, encourage you, please, to, and Tom, you know, that's a means of communicating what it is that's being done to the entire community by providing that information on the website and asking you all to visit that website more than perhaps you do at the moment. Uh, there's a wealth of information already on that, and it's an easy way for us to communicate to you what's going on on this particular subject. So uh, perhaps we could do that, Tom. Uh, oh, yes. Should the end result be, and I hope it is, but should the end result be that the county is not going to be able to help us, do you have an alternative approach to resolving the outflow problem out there on Beecham Road? Or is, is it just going to, if we don't get any money from the county, we can't do anything right there with the approach that you have? The end result is, is there anything else? The end result is never going away. Liquid taxes have been up right now, okay? I'm expecting at some point to these people to put some real pressure on folks to put those funds back in place. There are other alternatives to financing projects like this. There are bonds, there are loans, there are other things that they can do. We're not going away. We're just not going away, and they know that. Um, I, think, I think the interaction here today was really good, and I would appreciate what you have done in your research in the past. Um, maybe we should plan another meeting um, to follow up on the, on the suggestions that were given and you know, work on the solution to the problem while everybody's on a roll so we can keep going. I realize that people read emails and things like that, but I don't think you have the same interaction that you have in a meeting like this and maybe have another meeting to follow up on some of the suggestions would be appropriate. Yeah. Um, I don't think, I think that's a great idea. I think it's probably, uh, I'd like to see us probably think about that after the county passes their budget. Let's see where we're at because right. that's a real, that's a real uh, decision point. I'd just like to say my grand's pipe was uh, the water from 138 that flows the other way and goes uphill floods beyond me where it should be draining down because that chunk is going to see it. Ladies and gentlemen, I just want to thank you so very much for coming out. Obviously, this is important to you, and I want you to know that it's important to us as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.